Hi, everyone. Welcome to our discussion today on how we can better democratize the art market. I'm very proud to introduce Priscilla Dantes, who is the co-founder of Milson. And Milson um, so, uh, is a company that provides artistic solutions and art consulting to businesses worldwide through wall art, paintings, in illustrations, installations, digital art, and more. And for those of us, for those of you who follow us already, you may know that our mission is rooted in the desire to democratize the art market, making not only art appreciation, but also art investment available to everyone. This is something that we have in common with Milson. At London Trade Art, in fact, um, the way we're trying to do this is through our pooling investment projects, which we'll be, we will be launching shortly. Um, so the model of fractional art ownership, which allows everyone to become a co-owner of remarkable artworks. Today, we wanna to focus on this precise mission of art democratization and why it is so important, not only to us, but also more generally. So to start off, Priscilla, would you like to give a short introduction to Milson and more information as to how you're working to democratize the art market? Of course. Oh, thanks, Aurelia, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be talking to you, and especially about art and, uh, and how we can make the difference uh, on how to democratize the art world. Um, so like you said, um, at Milson, we provide artistic solutions um, to businesses. Uh, whether um, that is for wall art, like you said, a painting or an exclusive collaboration. And our goal is to place art everywhere and make it accessible to everyone. Um, so right now we have more than um, 50 artists in our portfolio, uh, emerging artists and also already established artists worldwide. Um, and our community is growing every day. Uh, so whether that is in Europe, America, uh, Brazil, um, one of the main reasons uh, why we, we, we started the business um, is because uh, we know that the artists are struggling um, to, to place themselves in the market and have that visibility. And uh, on the other hand, brands and businesses, uh, they also have difficulties in approaching these artists, knowing how to collaborate with them, communicate with them. And so this is why we're here as the middleman to facilitate and make everyone's life uh, easy. Uh, and so we're working right now with, um, with fashion brands like Loki uh, in Germany. We also work with real estate companies like WeWork. Um, and so it really depends on their demand, on their needs. So we really try to uh, accommodate that and, and find the best artists for the project. Um, so, yeah. That sounds great. It's very interesting. So there's so many different ways that we can give everyone access to art and art investment. And one of the biggest issues related to art collecting, in fact, is the difficulty to access information. Um, and this is something we've noticed. Um, and the belief that art is sort of an elite investment um, for the very few. So for many, it's also intimidating to enter a gallery and ask for prices. I know that in the beginning, it was quite intimidating for me. Um, and online channels surely play an important role in making our investments more transparent and also accessible, especially now that you know galleries are going online and also publishing prices, which makes everything way more transparent. And I think that the shift to more remote working, um, largely due to the pandemic, of course, has also led younger generations to explore the realms of online collecting for the first time. And according to the Hiscox Online Art Trade Report uh, 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has rapidly increased online sales, mostly within the lower age segments. Um, so primarily millennials. And it was reported that 82% of new art collectors who had been collecting for fewer than three years bought artwork, artworks online between March and September, 2020. Um, so we're seeing a real growth here. And similarly around 69% of millennial art enthusiasts said they'd bought art online during that same period. So it's, it was up 40% since 2019. And interestingly, when asked what motivated art buyers to purchase art during the pandemic, the majority cited emotional benefits or an individual passion for art, um, followed by supporting the art community during this challenging time. So I think we're really seeing a shift between this sort of elite only, you know, for, for um, the investment to sort of really supporting artists and a love of art. And that's really driving purchases, which I think is, there is a really nice evolution to witness. Um, and identity and status also seem more important to millennial buyers. It would appear that this is the true advantage of online accessibility to art and indeed fractional ownership 
It allows people to participate in their passions and broader society, which in turn helps them further establish their identity within their communities offline and online. So I think that digital tools can really help collectors and art lovers of different generations to overcome the entry barriers imposed by the traditional art market. Do you agree? Yes, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, and that's one of the main reasons why Mill Science is 100% digital. Uh, being able to work remotely, the whole team is working remotely from different countries and allowing any brand wherever they are in the world and artists to connect and collaborate regardless uh, you know, of their location. Um, that I think uh, are added values definitely that we add a human touch, you know, there's people behind it and uh, a middleman, so someone liaising and communicating with the brand. Um, so a brand in Germany can easily collaborate with uh, an artist in France, uh, wherever they are in the world, like I said before, uh, just by contacting us through the website and, uh, and, and a pool of artists as well. Um, however, I have to say that during pandemic, um, we had to uh, localize a lot of the work. So for example, a lot of brands are preferring to uh, work with local artists. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, because we have a, a large portfolio, we're able to, to find these artists wherever they are and continue our activity and artists continue to create as well and, getting, and continue to getting paid. As we know, a lot of the art community were affected during pandemic time. Yeah. Um, and we, we also, um, mid summer we try to, to, to look for new trends and to, to see what's hot out there. So uh, a lot of the artists uh, uh, decided to, to create digital art and shift their work to, to be more immersed in the digital world, uh, such as NFT, which is uh, what's currently everyone talking about. Uh, and I know you guys are, are involved in that as well. Um, and actually right now we are um, partnering with a French German uh, marketplace, uh, which is about to launch in a few weeks. And uh, it's still the better version, but um, we're helping them with the creation um, of the artists for the platform. Uh, I cannot release the name now, but I will keep you guys posted. And uh, I think one of the added values for them and the benefits that they have a low gas fee and so, and also a low environmental impact, uh, which is very important to, to remember. Um, so we'll be helping them with the lunch and uh, yeah, so we'd love to know more how you guys are involved with NFT and yeah. Absolutely, we'll keep you updated and that sounds all really exciting. I think, yeah, as you mentioned, we don't um, you know, often think about the climate impact when you speak about art, but it's definitely something that we need to keep in mind, especially with current uh, you know, circumstances and events that have occurred over the past few yeah. weeks. Um, so yeah, also the ultimate uh, you know, art online boom, as you said, in the form of NFTs can be intended as not only an important and accessible tool to regulate and own digital art, but also as a democratic way to own a digital copy of a masterpiece. Um, as recently happened at the Uffizi um, for the Tondo Doni by Michelangelo, whose NFT facsimile was sold for $170,000. I don't know if you saw that piece of news. Um, we recently published it in our newsletter, but um, it just shows how this is catching on, sort of this NFT um, trend. Um, in this sense, NFTs can function as a new alternative opportunity to collect art. And London Trade Arts Pooling Investment Project is an example of it. So we're soon going to be launching an artwork by one of our artists, Lapo Simeone, which is entitled 25,000 Euro. And the total value of the work, to give you an idea, is 25,000 pounds. But we will be selling it in shares of 250 pounds each in order to give everyone a chance to own a piece of it. Um, so we try to make it accessible. And, and this is what we do, um, you know, as well, if we think of a blue chip artwork, you know, it would be great to, for everyone to be able to own yeah. a Picasso, but not everyone can do so, only the elite few. Um, so fractional ownership is a way to allow people to still participate in that and feel like they own a piece of, the, of you know, this very high value artwork. Um, so yes, um, the shares will be purchasable, purchasable through NFTs, as I said, which you can also already reserve on our site. And um, it's not only the digitization process that is helping the art market to open its door and to engage a wider audience. Interesting synergies can be found also with other industries um, to increase awareness and sensibility towards art. And in our case, for example, we aim to create a bridge between art and finance, allowing everyone to trade art shares of high-valued artworks similar to what you would do with the stock market. 
Um, and also at Millicent, you create interesting collaborations with other fields like fashion. Is that correct? Yeah, so before uh, I have to say that you guys are doing an incredible job and uh, this is definitely something I want to learn and how to invest more, uh, especially in art. So hopefully uh, you can coach me on that. <laughs> um, and uh, for us, a way to invest uh, it was when you can easily access um, fashion goods or wherever that is, uh, any product that you buy with an exclusive art piece on it, made with your favorite local or international artist with an accessible price and a beautiful product. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of um, also beverage brands, they do a lot of collaboration with artists. So sometimes we buy the bottle, but you buy it for the artwork. How many times we've done that? We buy the product just for the graphics and for the patterns. Uh, yeah, and I think our collaboration, it's, it is definitely not a new topic. A lot of brands, the luxury brands and expensive brands uh, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, they've been doing this uh, for many years. Um, but again, this is becoming much more accessible. Uh, in any, any brand can do it and, and, and have access to art and, and with an accessible price. Um, and uh, we focus a lot on street art as well. And I think now street art is becoming much more valued than what it used to be. Um, we also have an example of uh, real estate companies, like we, like I said, we work or Selena or a lot of this uh, uh, real estate companies out there, bringing more art to this space um, to be, to create more um, friendly spaces, more colorful, and art definitely bring people together. Um, so it's not only, you know, it only brings this air of exclusivity, but also, um, you know, there has been many studies that uh, it makes people happier, calmer, more productive, more relaxed. Um, and I think that part of our job is to definitely um, educate our clients and to, to make them understand what, what, is the, what is the added value of having artwork and a creating the environment, right? Instead of having blank white walls. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's definitely a way to exchange, uh, make people exchange more, talk about it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And it's quite funny that, that you mentioned this because in fact, our, our most recent webinar was on this pre precise topic. So um, it had a special focus on how art can help ease the transition back to office life, um, which we know can be anxiety inducing for some people after, you know, uh, more than a year in lockdown. Um, and this is quite relevant in the UK now that we're uh, meant to lift restrictions next Monday. So, um, you know, this is a, is a big topic and art has been shown through various studies to boost motivation, as you said, productivity and help people feel more connected to their work and their colleagues. Um, and this is another topic in itself. We can talk about it for a, a long time, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. So, um, to end, I think we could maybe discuss how we see art democratization evolving in the future. Um, personally, I think that NFTs will continue to gather momentum and have a strong place in art institutions, such as galleries and museums, which will have to find new innov innovative ways to accommodate and display these um, in the next few years. I also think that more and more people will begin investing in art as they would with stocks. So as I mentioned with our fractional ownership model, that's it's quite similar to stock market. Um, especially as millennials and the generations below start coming onto the scene. And I also see brands, whether they be in art, fashion, as you said, or in other industry, continue to create stronger, unique collaborations with artists to further, further spread cultural knowledge and give everyone the opportunity to become familiar with art and also enjoy it, as you said again. Um, how do you see it evolving? Um... I, I, I think that NFT and digital art um, came to stay and it will, obviously art will always continue evolving in, through different um, forms of mm -hmm. technologies. Um, I think virtual and augmented reality, for example, is an excellent way to create an immersive work, um, more interactive, um, where, the, where the viewer and the consumer can experience the artwork and really be part of it. And this is something that we've um, we've seen a lot. Uh, uh, the public they really want to see, to touch, to interact, and, and 
and have that feeling that they are also creating. Um, brand experience as well is a, a great way to interact uh, with the public and bring more art, which is something that we've also been doing. A lot of brands, they come to us and say, you know, we want to launch a new product and we want to create a brand experience um, so people can talk about. Um, uh, right now we are organizing an art exhibition in Paris uh, in August and we actually in contact with a brand called La Blanco uh, and uh, they provide a, a, a augmented and virtual reality technology which we might uh, be able to use it uh, use with the artwork of our artists and uh, you have also other brands like Campari they've recently done a campaign in Berlin which was pretty cool um, uh, where they support the artists and uh, with having exclusive artwork using virtual reality and augmented reality um, to interact with the consumer. And again, it's a way of having people remember your brand, uh, talk about your brand. Um, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, I definitely agree that um, I think that it came to stay, but again, there will be more other forms, which I don't know yet, but I think our job is to really keep um, on top of things and, and, and see where, it, where it's going. And if we can also be part of it and, and, and make it accessible to everyone, I think that's uh, I think it's amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, can, I agree with you completely. And yeah, as you said, I think it's a, a fast paced, ever changing world. And we just need to keep on track with, you know, everything that's happening. And I think that, you know, as we've seen in recent years, things are developing quite quickly in terms of digital art, NFTs, and virtual reality, as you said. So it's uh, our job to, to stay up, up to date um, and try to deliver the best to our customers. But it's very exciting. I'm very sad that I won't be able to make the exhibition in Paris in August. I wish it would be easier to travel, but it's still quite difficult. But hopefully I can catch another next episode. time. <laughs> yeah, next time, exactly. Yes, it's it's not the last one. I mean, this is a first public art exhibition. Also first time, you know, I mean, launching a Milsan because when we when we started the company it was during pandemic. So we had never had really the chance to meet our artists in person. And so I think uh, even though there is technology and augmented reality, um, at the end of the day, we all love to be face to face and, and, and meet and greet the artists, see who is behind the creation. And um, yeah, and so maybe next time we'll be able to come when it's easy to travel and less restrictions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, please keep me updated. Um, but thank you so much for, for discussing this topic with me today. I really enjoyed it and uh, hopefully we can catch you again later to discuss something else. But I really learned a lot and I can't please, wait to yeah. see what Milson will do next. Yes, thank you so much for inviting me today. And uh, I hope to we can do we can keep doing this and uh, talking more about art and how to democratize it. <laughs>